Flight 11 just proved SpaceX can land both stages with precision. The booster, caught. The ship, controlled ocean landing. But here's what nobody expected. Elon Musk just dropped a bombshell timeline that's got everyone talking. He said one word, springtime. That means catching Starship itself could happen in just months, possibly as early as Flight 13. But can they really pull off something this insane that fast? What breakthrough did Musk find to accelerate this timeline? And what massive upgrades are happening right now at Starbase to make this possible? Let me take you back to the moment that changed everything. Right after Flight 11, Musk posted on X celebrating the booster's precision hover, a sustained hold at exact position after returning from space at hypersonic speeds. The community went wild. Then someone asked the question everyone was thinking, when will the tower catch the ship? Musk's reply, one word, springtime. That single word just compressed what many thought would take years into a matter of months. We're talking about Flight 13, possibly launching in March 2026. But here's what makes this fascinating. This isn't just Musk being optimistic. There's real engineering progress backing this timeline, and the infrastructure upgrades happening right now at Starbase tell us SpaceX isn't playing around. Here's the logic. Flight 12 is the critical test flight. It's the bridge between everything we've learned and everything we're about to attempt. This isn't just another Starship launch. V3 represents a fundamental redesign, hot staging for efficiency, refined grid fins on Super Heavy, upgraded Raptor engines on both stages, and most importantly, experimental systems designed specifically for the catching process. If Flight 12 succeeds, and I mean truly succeeds with strong ascent and descent performance, then Flight 13 becomes the obvious candidate for the first ship catch attempt. The timeline works perfectly. Flight 12 launches late December 2025 or January 2026. Then Flight 13 rolls out by March. That's springtime. That's Musk's window. But here's the reality check. SpaceX won't rush this. If Flight 12 reveals any significant issues, they'll push the catch back to Flight 14 or 15. This is the difference between SpaceX's move-fast culture and reckless risk-taking. They move fast when the data supports it. They pause when it doesn't. Now let's talk about what's actually stopping SpaceX from catching the ship today. Two major problems emerged from Flight 11, and both need solutions before any catch attempt. First, the heat shield. Yes, it improved dramatically from Flight 10 to 11, less leaking, less oxidation, better tile adhesion. But better isn't perfect, and perfect is what full reusability demands. Every hexagonal tile faces temperatures exceeding thousands of degrees during re-entry, one weak point could mean catastrophic failure. Even if SpaceX catches the ship successfully, a damaged heat shield means weeks of refurbishment. That defeats the entire purpose of rapid reusability. Think about it this way. SpaceX didn't just catch Super Heavy to prove they could. They caught it to enable same-day refueling and relaunch. The ship needs that same capability, and the heat shield is the gatekeeper. Second, and this one's more serious, the fuel tank issue. During Flight 11, observers noticed missing heat shield tiles near the nose cone payload section. That exposed the header tank to extreme re-entry heat, causing localized fire and visible burn damage. The ship still landed. But what if that breach happened earlier? During ascent, while carrying payloads? The consequences could be catastrophic. Even more concerning are reports about the main liquid oxygen tank potentially suffering deformation or cracking under thermal and structural stress. If verified, this is a fundamental structural integrity problem. 
SpaceX's engineers are undoubtedly prioritizing this for V3, implementing reinforcements and design revisions. Because here's the truth. You can't catch something that might break apart in your hands. Here's what most people miss. SpaceX has already proven the hardest parts. They've transitioned vehicles from hypersonic velocity to stable hover multiple times. Both Super Heavy and Ship have demonstrated this capability. The flight control systems, the engine throttling, the aerodynamic control surfaces, they're all maturing rapidly. And here's something crucial. While Starship hasn't reached full orbital trajectory yet, it has achieved hypersonic orbital speeds. SpaceX has gathered massive amounts of data on the most demanding flight phases. Re-entry, thermal management, controlled descent. They've even simulated payload deployment operations. Reaching orbit isn't reinvention at this point. It's refinement. My analysis? Flight 12 probably won't achieve full orbit, but it'll get close. That positions Flight 13 as potentially the first true orbital mission combined with the first ship catch attempt. If these two milestones align, we're witnessing one of the most significant moments in aerospace history. Not just SpaceX history, but human spaceflight history. Now let's talk about what's happening on the ground, because this is where you see SpaceX's execution speed in full display. Chopsticks Pad B. This is the system designed specifically for catching the ship. And it's not theoretical anymore. It's operational. On February 26th, the left arm opened for the first time. Two days later, both arms lifted in test movements. The actuators are installed. The ramps are integrated. The cladding systems are in place. Yes, they still need weight testing, those orange water bags simulating a returning ship's mass, but the system is fundamentally ready. Here's the interesting part. The orbital launch mount isn't finished yet. Some people see this as a blocker. I see it differently. SpaceX doesn't need a completed OLM to catch the ship. Once caught, the chopsticks simply lower the ship onto a stand positioned below. The current setup suggests SpaceX is developing a mobile OLM concept, allowing them to proceed without waiting for the full launch mount. That's problem-solving in real time. Meanwhile, the OLM itself is getting major upgrades. New steel plate reinforcements for durability. Integrated drainage systems beneath the structure. There's speculation about hydraulic pipes, electrical equipment, Maybe even a detonation suppression system using water and nitrogen. The flexibility being built into this system tells you everything about SpaceX's long-term thinking. And then there's the BQD gantry, this new structure that appeared on February 24th. Thanks to Lewis Nag's team and their 3D renderings, we now understand it's positioned parallel to the OLM right next to the flame trench. Its primary role appears to involve supporting the quick disconnect process for the booster. The exact interface mechanics with the OLM remain unclear, but the fact that SpaceX is building parallel systems for rapid operations shows they're not thinking about one catch. They're thinking about hundreds. Successfully catching the ship isn't just a cool engineering flex. It's the key that unlocks SpaceX's entire business model for the next decade. Right now, SpaceX is targeting 25 Starship launches this year. Ambitious? Absolutely. But that's just the warm-up. They're planning 400 launches over the next four years. You can't hit those numbers with ocean landings and lengthy refurbishment cycles. You need tower catches. You need rapid turnaround. You need both stages landing within minutes of each other, getting refueled, and launching again within days maybe even hours eventually. And it's not just about launch cadence. Starting this year, SpaceX begins constructing the in-orbit refueling system, critical for lunar missions, Mars missions, deep space operations. Mastering that technology requires numerous test flights. 
The infrastructure being built right now at Pad B will be replicated at Cape Canaveral's LC-39A. The Starship Tower is already constructed there, waiting for its OLM, Gigabay Manufacturing Hub, is in development. This is infrastructure for an entirely new era of spaceflight, not government-funded, years-long development programs, commercial, rapid iteration, high-frequency access to space. Catching the ship is fundamentally harder than catching Super Heavy. The ship is lighter, faster, more aerodynamically complex. The timing and alignment tolerances are even tighter. The margin for error is smaller. But if there's one thing SpaceX has proven over the past two years, it's that they don't back down from ambitious challenges when the engineering fundamentals are sound. The foundation is laid. Flights 10 and 11 proved controlled landings work. V3 brings the necessary upgrades. Pad B infrastructure is racing toward completion. The chopsticks are moving. The systems are being tested. So when Musk says springtime, he's not speculating. He's reading the engineering roadmap and seeing a clear path forward, assuming Flight 12 delivers the performance they need. So here's where we stand. Flight 12 launches within weeks, maybe late December, maybe early January. That flight will tell us everything we need to know. If the V3 upgrades perform as expected, if the heat shield holds better, if those fuel tanks stay intact under stress, then Flight 13 becomes the moment we've all been waiting for. Springtime 2026, the first ship catch attempt. Not five years from now, not a distant dream, just months away. Think about what that means. Other aerospace companies are still figuring out how to land boosters reliably. SpaceX is about to catch both stages of the world's largest rocket with mechanical arms, refuel them, and launch again within days. That's not iteration. That's revolution. But here's what makes this story even more compelling. We're watching it unfold in real time. Every test at Pad B, every chopstick movement, every infrastructure upgrade. This isn't a polished documentary about something that already happened. We're living through the moment when spaceflight transforms from expensive, one-time missions into routine, reusable transportation. Will they actually pull it off by spring? The engineering fundamentals say yes. The infrastructure progress says yes. Musk's confidence says yes. But SpaceX has taught us one crucial lesson. They move fast when the data supports it, and they pause when it doesn't. My prediction? If Flight 12 is clean, we're watching history in March. If not, maybe Flight 14 or 15. Either way, it's happening. The question isn't if, it's when. So what do you think? Can SpaceX really catch Starship by springtime? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I want to hear whether your team absolutely or team, they need more time. And if you found this analysis valuable, hit that like button and subscribe to New Space Review so you don't miss the moment when this actually happens. Because trust me, when those chopsticks close around a returning starship for the first time, you'll want to be here watching it with this community. This is the future arriving faster than anyone expected and we get to witness it.